Hey guys, so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how to properly remove carpeting if you have hardwood floors underneath. There's a couple of things that you want to take into consideration so that you don't damage the wood floors. Because the last thing you want to do is put big, huge dents or gouges in the wood floor or even scratches uh, that you can do from cutting the carpet. So what you want to do when you cut the carpet, generally you want to cut it in three to four foot lengths. Now, some of that depends upon what, uh, if you're getting rid of it yourself or if you are putting it um, by the curb. Um, so you're going to want to check with your local um, garbage place to see how big of a sections and how much they will take for uh, picking it up. But one of the things that you want to do when you cut, you don't want to cut all the way like through. What I would recommend is pulling up a little bit of a corner of the carpet and kind of lift and cut as you go along. The reason for that is, is if you cut too far down through, uh, the carpeting, you'll actually hit the wood and then you'll actually leave a scar. So that's where sometimes you'll see like a mark that goes all the way across. That's from a knife cutting through the carpeting. So you want to kind of lift and cut when you do that with the, um, the carpeting and then roll it up. And I'll show you this cool little trick. I think I saw it on uh, Hardwood Floor Magazine, um, which is for... Um, wood flooring professionals. That was a tip and trick that somebody had shown um, how to kind of roll it and make a handle, which makes it really easy to carry out. So once you do that, then um, you want to then remove the um, pad. And so then you can kind of just roll up the pad in that um, to kind of remove it. And then you want to re pull the, the staples with a nail puller and the nail puller uh, works really well because it kind of rolls. Uh, so depending upon how embedded the staples are, you may need to use either a small screwdriver or a five in one painter's tool. It has a little bit of a, a, a point on it. That always works great uh, for getting those embedded staples out. You want to make sure that you don't bust those off uh, below the surface. If you do take a small punch, punch those in. What ends up happening is, is if they break off, a piece of sandpaper hits it, it removes the, the grit all the way around when it comes time to sand, and then it leaves a mark, and you have to go through and remove that. Once you've kind of removed all of those staples in that, then there's the tack strip, which is along the perimeter. And depending upon how they installed it will make a difference as to how much um, work it is. Some just use the nails that are in, some add extra nails. Generally, the best way that I have found to remove it is get a flat bar or some sort of like cat's paw type thing and get underneath the nail and then just slowly pry along. I'll show you my favorite tools that, that I like to use when uh, removing it and uh, kind of show you what it looks like to uh, remove carpeting. Underneath, uh, you can see here they did double rows of tack strip, not entirely sure why. And then you can see all those staples in that that are going to need to get pulled. Um, and this padding is a older like rubber backed padding. You can see the floor is exposed and is pretty good shape. So it should look really great once it's refinished. So this is where you kind of either want to start in a corner, pull the corner up, so that you can be able to get your knife there and then just cut and pull as you go. That way you won't hurt that hardwood floor.
Then when we get to the end, so that you can keep doing it, just kind of pull up, and then uh, you can cut here because there's a tack strip. And then you got it like that. And then what I like to do is flip it so that the carpet side is down. Um, the reason for that is, is then as you carry the carpet out, the, you don't scratch any doorways or anything like that. The backing then is in because otherwise when you go by doorways or other things like that, you sometimes if you bump against it, you can kind of mar it up. So then uh, just like to roll it. And I'll show you this kind of cool little trick that I, I talked about. So you're going to make a cut about like this, um, one here and one here, and you're going to want to go through two rolls of it. So you can have a handle like this, then you're going to want to cut one end. And then in here, you're going to want to cut through another section. So you have a handle. Now to keep this all together, you take this and you tuck it through here and then pull it. And now you have a handle to grab onto. The roll doesn't come apart. It's very easy to get rid of. So this is a, a great way to kind of do that. So to remove um, the pad, you just pretty much pull it up. This is a typical that you may see in an older house. Uh, it's a kind of a higher end pad, but it's uh, all rubber. You can see how it is exposing the uh, wood floors underneath. Um, depending upon the different pad will depend upon if you're able to roll it up. This pad is very heavy, so it's not really going to work to roll it up. Otherwise, if it's uh, uh, kind of that multicolor type pad, uh, a lot of times you can roll it up. Here, they put a lot of staples in. You can see like every four to six inches, there are staples. So you can see how there are all these staples, and this is where the nail puller comes into play that works really well you just grab it you don't want to like squeeze it too hard so that it's like full just like lightly grab onto it and then rock and then you'll be able to pull them out now it is pulling out a little bit easier because it is an oak sometimes on maple they they do have a tendency to get buried a little bit but that's where you would come back in if they do break off with punch so you can just kind of see, you just go around, you pull them. Sometimes if you're not quite sure if you got them all, take a, a, a flat, flat bar of some sort and just kind of run it over. Or I even have just a, a flat square or something like that. So you can kind of see, you know, like there's all of these here. So you just, you know, roll and pull to, to get them all removed. So the, whoops, staples are all gone. Of course, you know, there's always that one, but that's where you can just kind of check like with some sort of flat 
edge or something like that, you can just make sure then that all the staples are gone. So now that the staples are removed, the next thing is, is to remove that uh, tack strip. Here, they doubled it up for whatever reason. And you can see like they put a nail like every four inches, which in my opinion is a little bit overkill, especially on hardwood. It's not gonna go anywhere. They have shanks on the nails. There's a double row, major overkill. But that being said, now we have to pull them up. So this is where the flat bar like this uh, comes into play and then also your hammer. So I like to get start right underneath uh, where there's a nail just so that you have a point where you're gonna get the nail and the tack strip. Otherwise, if you go here, there's a better chance that this tack strip is actually gonna break. So just tap, get underneath. Don't lift it up all the way uh, because otherwise it'll definitely crack, but slowly just work your way underneath that, that nail. And depending upon the age of the tag strips will also make a difference in how brittle the wood is. And so sometimes this doesn't always work and some of the nails are left behind. And this is where I really like this tool to uh, get underneath there, or you can use the hammer. So you can see you got most of the nails um, just be careful with these tack strips because they do have all these small little nails. You don't want to catch yourself on them. Sometimes what you can do is, so it doesn't make a humongous mess, um, you can pull the pad up, leave some of the pad exposed, and put those uh, tack strips inside of the um, pad. That way, when you carry them out, you don't scratch yourself and cut and everything else. So there's just a couple of these that uh, go back and pull. And there's a couple of staples, like this one's buried. So just get underneath it. You can also use this if you want to pull the nails out. It works. So it's not like you'd have to go get a bunch of tools. So that's kind of how you, you know, remove the, the tack strip. Just uh, making sure you get underneath those nails and then it'll kind of pry up a little bit easier. So you got all of them except a little bit in the corner. You can kind of see how, yes, there are some small little holes in there. We do try to go back around when we do refinish the floors to fill those. Yes, you still are gonna see small little holes. They aren't as noticeable. Um, and unfortunately, some of them may get missed, but you don't always notice them. The small staple ones, those are so small uh, and so many of them that it's hard to uh to take care of those so that's kind of how you remove uh the the tack strip and uh without you can see damaging any of the the floor or anything like that that's the main thing because you know you don't want to sit there and dig in and take a big gouge out because then you're going to have this spot where there's going to be filler and there's not going to be grain and that's going to be quite noticeable. So this is a great way and uh, tools to use to, you know, not damage the hardwood floor. So they're all ready for your uh, hardwood floor refinisher to take care of uh, your floor. So you can see all of the carpet is removed and that is what the 
final floor looks like after the carpeting is all removed. So hopefully these tips were helpful for you. And when you discover hardwood underneath that you use these tips so that your floors don't get damaged or the least amount of possible when removing the carpeting and uh, like and subscribe for uh, more tips.